so good morning students i will be today continuing with re human reproduction and the topic is female reproductive system within that i will be dealing with mammary glands and external genitalia so first i'll be telling about the mammary glands So, so as you can see, So as you can see here, this is the, first I'll be explaining about memory glands. So memory glands are the prominences that are present in the, above the thoracic wall. So the human being, as you all know, will have thorax region. That means, suppose if there is a diaphragm here, this is going to divide the body into cavities. The upper cavity is called thoracic cavity as well as the lower cavity. This is called as an abdominal cavity. And uh, the thorax, this whole structure, complete structure is called as a thorax. It will have a thoracic wall. And just above the thoracic wall, this is going to be present as a prominence. Okay. So this prominence, these are paired, so memory glands are paired prominences. So prominences is that it is, prof I mean, uh, it is elevated uh, structure. It's a prominent structure here. So here comes the thoracic wall and in front of the thoracic wall comes the muscles. So these are the ribs and the thoracic wall and above it, comes one of the major muscles called as pectoralis major and in front of it will be present the memory glands. So they are basically prominences, paired prominences present above the thoracic wall. Now these memory glands are not present in all animals. They are particularly present in certain taxon or certain group of animals and that is they are characteristics of mammals. So memory glands will be present in uh, all the mammals, so it is one of the unique features of mammals. That is why the word mammalia has come for the class. So this is the characteristic, except there are of course uh, certain features within the memory glands may be absent, which I'll be explaining as and when I go into detail. Now what is the function of this memory gland is? production of milk. So main function of memory glands is production of milk and that milk is used to 
nourish the young ones. Uh, of course, uh, used to nourish the young ones. That is the main function of milk. So it is basically functional in female, whereas non-functional in, uh, I'm talking uh, now coming back from mammal to human beings. Uh, now, uh, what is the function of mammary glands in human beings is that production of milk. Occurs. It is functional in female, but it is non-functional in male. So it is basically non-functional. in male. So it does not have any major functions, important role in the male. It is only structural. Whereas it is functional in female that too uh, from the time of, I mean it starts developing from the time of puberty and starts producing milk after the parturition, that is after the birth. Okay. So starts developing. It starts developing, that is growth and development of, uh, of the membrane glands occur once the puberty is attained. And this development of membrane glands will be based on hormones like progesterone and estrogen. These hormones will help in development of memory glands. But they become functional. they start becoming functional or start producing milk after the birth process also called parturition. So therefore, starts producing milk the memory glands will start producing milk when they start producing milk this phenomena is called lactation. This whole process will be called as lactation. Production of milk is lactation. But when this process starts is not in puberty, but once the puberty is like marks the beginning of reproductive phase, but production of milk occurs after the gestation is over, after the birth, birth process is over, then production of milk occurs. This production of milk is called lactation. Now this will be after parturition. It is also one of the accessory organs, important structure or accessory structures in female reproductive system. Which one is? The memory glands. It is because uh, uh, after the reproduction is complete, uh, I mean after the birth process occurs, which is an important event in the reproduction, the nourishing of young ones takes due to, uh, nourishing of young ones is due to memory glands. That is why it is one of the actually but yet important structure in the female reproductive system. Okay, so after parturition, the process of what begins is the process of lactation begins. So starts producing milk and that phenomenon is lactation after parturition. Okay. Now initially there are again further uh, nature and characteristics of milk will differ. That is initially the milk which is produced is called as colostrum uh, which is a kind of you can tell immature milk whereas later on whatever after a few days after the cholesterol is over, the later milk, uh, later on the milk is called as the mature milk. Okay. So it means that uh, this is the, even earlier times the nature of milk is different. I mean initial few days the nature of milk will be different and later on the nature of milk composition and all changes. Okay. And their nutritional uh, weightage also differs. So this is, uh, about the functionality of uh, what is called uh, the memory glands. Next is nature of memory glands. 
Now, memory glands, how is its nature is? It is basically an exocrine gland. Memory gland is an exocrine gland. You have already studied in structural organization that exocrine glands are those that have duct. So, which are the duct system in memory glands? I will be explaining further. So, it is basically an exocrine gland, a gland that has the ducts. Now, there are again different types of exocrine gland and those uh, uh, different types of exocrine glands uh, will be further uh, what type is epocrine gland. So, memory gland is an exocrine gland. What kind of exocrine gland it is? The type of the exocrine gland it is apocrine gland. It is a apocrine gland. Okay. Now, apocrine gland, uh, uh, what is the meaning of it is? The cells inside the memory glands that produce milk, once they secrete the milk, even certain apical portion of the cell also is released along with the milk. Okay. So, if I say this is the cell that is present in milk secreting cell it is and this is going to be releasing the milk, secreting the milk rather than releasing let me tell it is secreting the milk. So, the cells here will secrete milk, these are milk secreting cells in the milk secreting units. Now, when the secretion, these will secrete the milk, uh, so just Suppose this is the cell that secretes the milk and after secretion of milk, apical portion of the cell is lost along with the secretion. That means portion of the cell is uh, kind of lost along with the secretion and uh, that, that portion which is lost is nothing but an apical portion, the above portion. Here, the above portion, apical portion is lost there. Okay. So, this part, this part of the cell is broken. Nucleus is not affected. Nucleus is not lost. Nucleus is retained, but the apical portion is lost. So, that makes it, uh, that uh, will uh, explain about this apocrine nature of the, explain about this apocrine nature of the, memory glands. So, basically an exocrine gland and that means it has a duct, it's apocrine gland and it's a compound gland, compound saccular gland. The milk secreting units does not exist in tube like this, but instead they exist in sac, sac-like in structure. So, milk secreting units that are sac-like in structure here. Okay. So, that is why these are sac like in structure. So, such type of glands are called as saccular glands, whereas this one, which is, is called as tubular glands. But, however, uh, this will not, uh, the memory glands are not here tubular. Suppose it was tubular, then these all milk secreting units would have been tube like shape, but basically it is sac like in shape. So, it is called as a saccular gland. It is a compound saccular gland. It is not a simple saccular gland. Simple saccular means it will have only one sac like structure. But here many of them are going to fuse and those ducts are further going to branch and finally get released. So the number of duct system is extensive. In a compound saccular gland, single duct won't be there. Multiple ducts are going to be there. That's why it is called as a compound gland or and because it is sac-like structure, it is called as a compound saccular gland.
so this was um, about the introduction uh, uh, the membrane glands here uh, also when it comes to one of the germ layer that contributes to uh, formation of memory glands is the ectoderm okay uh, so i told what is the function what is the structure what is the definition and occurrence of the memory glands now going to what are the different parts of memory glands that is the oral structure i told it is a prominence but within this prominence various other structures are present so what these structures are okay so memory glands memory glands will have two portions one is the gland portion the glandular part one part is glandular part the second part apart from gland what will be there is the fibrous part of the memory gland and the third part will be the fatter part of the memory gland okay so in that what is uh, very important also according to ncrt will be the which part the important part is the glandular part of memory glands so i'll be now explaining about the glandular part of memory glands the glandular part the glandular part of memory glands glandular part of memory glands what does it consist of so before that here if you see the structure of memory glands in the ncrt image so this is the glandular portion with its ducts and surrounding so basically what is present in the memory glands is the lobes the memory gland is divided into lobes here or compartments they are actually so each lobe this is going to be one lobe like that this is going to be one lobe as you can see like this there are 15 to 20 lobes okay so this lobular part will have milk secreting unit so secretory part is nothing but glandular part but not just secretory part once see this lobe is further divided into lobules having milk secreting unit called alveoli now each lobe will again give rise to ducts so duct is not a secretory region but it is a duct portion and this is a secretory portion so there are two portions in the glandular part of memory glands one is the secretory portion one will be the secretory portion or the duct portion you can say instead of portion also part also even that is correct and then the second is the duct part the second is going to be the duct part so milk is basically released by which part the secretory part of the memory gland so this part the lobes are there here now secretory portion if you see will be containing the lobes memory memory lobes they are called memory lobes these are compartments what they are they are compartments the memory glands were divided into compartments now these compartments the number is within a particular range they cannot be too many in number they are ranges from 15 to 20 
from 15 to 20 is the number of memory lobes. So right now I will be explaining the secretory part. So the memory lobes will be 15 to 20 in number. Now within this lobes milk is produced but lobe itself cannot produce milk but lobe instead has milk secreting units inside it and those milk secreting units are called as alveoli. Secreting units is called alveoli. As I already stated this is compound secular gland. So alveoli, milk secreting in alveoli is sac like in structure. Okay. So it, it is it means that um, uh, structure is sac like it's not tubular as I already explained it. Okay. So alveoli, the secular part of it, secular part of the secretory region. So this is the milk secreting unit. So, how will be this milk secreting unit is? So, alveoli, if I say alveoli, so it will be sac like, that's why I told circular portion, it is a duct, so it is an exocrine gland, and many ducts are this compound circular glands. Now, within this, so I will draw it out for one minute. Now this, within this are, are the cells. Now these cells are capable of producing milk. Okay. Under the influence of certain hormones. However, hormonal and neural part of lactation will be explained in the last part of the chapter. So this is milk secreting cells in the milk secreting unit called the alveoli okay and these cells are capable of producing milk under the influence of hormones okay now when these will produce milk so these milk secreting cells will produce milk Okay, so therefore, first function of memory glands itself will be what? Production of milk, which involves secretion of milk with the help of hormones, which are those hormones I'll mention at the end. So one is nothing but production of milk, which is known by a term called lactation. Then second, once it is produced, there is a lumen here. What is there here is lumen is there. And the milk gets collected in that lumen. Milk gets collected in that lumen. Now from the lumen, the milk has to move into the path. Okay, In particular, duct system, it has to move. And finally, it has to be released outside. That release is called ejection. Now ejection is brought also by about another hormone. So for secreting one hormone for ejection, one hormone. So another function of memory gland is not just production also, it is also responsible for ejection of milk or release of milk, ejection or release of milk. Okay, so this is uh, about the memory lobes and the alveoli that are present. Now as I told, as I told here, this alveoli is surrounded by special type of epithelium here. This is called myoepithelium. However, not so important, but still, this epithelium helps in ejection of milk. And again, I told it is basically hormonally controlled. Production of milk is hormonally controlled. And release or ejection of milk 
also is hormonally controlled okay so this was about which portion glandular portion of mammary glands now next portion comes the duct portion okay that means within the secretory region only what will be there duct part will be there okay what part is going to be there duct part is going to be there so here what will be there is milk secreting unit alveoli will be there and the duct that arises from it okay from the alveoli whatever the duct will arise so first earliest duct system and that is called memory tubules now in the in one lobe so in one lobe there are many alveoli and they will give rise to memory tubules those memory tubules of this whole lobe right now and this is a lobe will unite and form a another tubule called memory duct understand and mem so here you can see this is the memory duct this is whereas inside the smaller branches they will be called as memory tubule and then they dilate at a particular portion near the nipple and that is called a lactiferous sinus so the duct portion should begin in a particular sequence only it cannot particular sequence particular sequence what is the sequences from the alveoli from particular lobe whatever the tubes will be there many tubes are arising from that alveoli those are called memory tubules memory tubules those are called as memory tubules okay now memory tubules of a lobe further unite and give rise to the next one also begins with the term so let me write it a bit above so duct part i'll make it short here duct part so first one is what memory tubule the earliest branch arising from the milk secreting unit is memory tubule now memory tubule is also forming the next one see just notice here also forming the next one how one complete lobe all those memory tubules from a lobe will unite and form a duct here that is called memory duct so you can see here united one this one is the memory duct so memory tubule unite to form memory duct okay for ultimately it should begin with where lumen lumen from where the milk is stored from there it should reach to memory tubule and then it should go to memory duct and later on it is going further it is being is moving in memory sinus oh excuse me memory ampulla understand uh, so memory ampulla so you can see dilated the ducts which are arising from the lobes become unite and then form very bigger structure or dilated portion and that dilated portion is called memory ampulla memory ampulla has a name another name it is called lactiferous sinus it is also called lactiferous sinus okay so this one is basically a dilated portion it is it is a dilated portion
it is a dilated portion. Lactiferous sinus secantal or not. From here, what happens here is further from this uh, ampulla, the ducts are formed, many ducts, fine small ducts will be forming from this ampulla again. Okay. So, they will be called as lactiferous ducts. What are they called? They are called as lactiferous ducts. They are many. And they will open into a structure called nipple. Okay. So, therefore, here lactiferous ducts will finally be opened, opens, forms an opening in an elevated structure or a papillary structure called the nipple. Okay. So, this is about the duct portion. Now, how these secretory portion and duct portion develop in human being is that secretory portion, duct portion also develop due to hormones and two important hormones for development of duct portion and secretory portion is the progesterone and estrogen. These two are very important hormones for development of a glandular portion of the mammary glands. Okay. So, next is next is nipples. Okay. These are elevated structures. This is an elevated structure. It is also papillary. Why? Because it is sensory. It is having a rich supply of nerves. Now, surrounding this, uh, so it has going to have a pores uh, that are arising from this lactiferous ducts for let out of the milk. Now, surrounding these nipples will be pigmented region. Okay. So, this is the elevated portion. So, surrounding this, it continues as a pigmented portion. Okay. The pigmented portion is called areola. Pigmented portion is called areola. So, in this region, since there is a, a, like a, this has a role, this particular region has a role in milk ejection reflex. So, milk ejection reflex, I will be going to explain the last part of the, uh, the same chapter. Okay. So, basically here you should know ampulla means uh, it is nothing but a dilated portion. When a particular duct becomes dilated and it becomes more broader, uh, it can take the name. Ampulla. It's not just here, even in other parts of the body also, it can take the same name. Okay, so this was about the ampulla, the lactiferous duct and all the structures relevant to which portion. Now here you can see pectoralis major, I told about it, these are strong muscles there, they are present here. Above the muscles only, the gland is supposed to be there. And there are muscles between the ribs intercostal muscles that these are the ribs okay so this was about the uh, glandular part of memory gland next is fibrous part see these all glandular part duct part they are not very tough structure so they need support and for support, they need to be connected with other tissue and therefore, fibrous part of memory glands consists of connective tissue. That's all. 
this is to just keep additional information apart from what is given in NC. So therefore, this one is supporting the duct as well as the alveoli. So basically, it supports duct and duct and alveoli. So this becomes so here additionally in between connective tissues are going to be there and certain connective tissue can run along the length completely from one end to another certain fine ligaments suspensory ligaments can also be present so basically connective tissue part of it is called as the fibrous part of mammary glands uh, then adipose part okay so major portion of memory gland is also deposition of fat. So that is called adipose. Okay. Adipose connective tissue, as you know, it is uh, basically a deposition. So fibrous connective tissue or adipose connective tissue. Both are connective tissue. So uh, apart from uh, secretory part, it is also having connective tissue part. So adipose is deposition of fat, fat deposition in the memory glands, okay. Usually where this fat is present is between the lobes. So here you have 15 to 25 lobes. In between the lobes, the fat is going to be there here. You can see light pink in color here. Then on the surface here, on the surface there is fat deposition okay so that is uh, about the uh, what is called the adipose tissue part of memory glands now role of hormone in lactation as i already know told you all lactation is production of milk so here Hormones are what kind? What kind of hormones actually keeps this memory gland functioning? Okay, those hormones are two types, two types of hormones that will uh, provide function to the memory glands. And those hormones are, uh, I'm only mentioning now and later on, uh, how exactly this, uh, later on, what is the role and how exactly they uh, take part in milk ejection uh, and production will be taught in the last part of the chapter. Okay, so prolactin and another hormone is called oxytocin. Prolactin and oxytocin. Okay, prolactin and oxytocin are two important hormones that controls the function of the memory glands. And already I wrote the function will be production of milk and ejection of milk. So uh, that is, and the elevated portion, already memory gland itself is an elevated prominence, but within this, the elevated portion again becomes another. So this is about the, but how the control, how is the production inhibited uh, during lactation, okay, depending upon this, uh, depending upon the how the milk is utilized all that will be uh, explained in the last part of the class so if this gland is there the memory gland is actually an exocrine gland but if you see how it uh, is basically how it is modified it's, it's a modified sweat gland is a modified sweat glands. The sweat glands would be modified to produce which the glandular portion of memory glands. So this uh, completes um, uh, regarding the memory glands. And next is external genitalia in female
It's an NCRT diagram for the for uh, for for the female reproductive system. So this is here. This diagram actually I have taken to explain the external genitalia. So external genitalia of female. Okay. So here external genitalia, they are, they are the parts of female reproductive system and has a role uh, in other phenomena like copulation and all. So here this portion uh, will be called as the external genitalia. Now, what is the uh, name of this uh, external genitalia? Uh, you can tell name or what is that external genitalia called? Okay, it should have a particular term there. The term used to describe the external genitalia is called as the vulva. So, vulva is an external genitalia. So, this portion so what, what else? This is the urinary bladder. Okay. And this is the womb and the vagina. So this will be the vaginal opening and this is going to be the urinary bladder opening. It means the vulva, the external genitalia is going to have two openings. Understand? One is opening for let out of urine here and another is opening for say various secretions uh, within the female reproductive system. Uh, so it can be even birth process in a pregnancy woman or a menstrual discharge. All those even the release of ovum will be through this vaginal opening. Okay. The opening of the urethra is called urethral meatus or urethral orifice and the opening of the vagina here is called vaginal opening or vaginal orifice. So here two separate openings are there in female. This differs from male which has a common opening both for urine and sperm in case of male. But in case of female there is a separate opening for the urine and there is a separate opening for the reproductive all the discharges or the cells or even the birth process all will occur through vaginal opening. So this part therefore will be called the external genitalia. What do an external genitalia compose of? Okay you have already studied the structure this vagina is not going to come in external genitalia. It has its own structures. So, which are those structures that will come in vulva or external genita? So, vulva includes mons pubis. Vulva includes one of the structures called mons pubis. And then libia majora. Then labia minora, labia minora. Okay. Then other structures, say uh, separate structures, which are also distinct, is clitoris, which is in fact coming. Uh, it's at the junction of labia minora, which I'll be telling afterwards. And then even one more structure, hymen. But remember, vagina is different from vulva. Vagina is this, it's part of birth canal here. Okay, so that is not going to come under external genitalia. What is going to come is the, all the, structures that are present exterior here that is 
called as bulb including hymen so what has to be uh, noted here is hymen is included in the so these are the components of the external genitalia or vulva okay so external genitalia is called vulva which in turn has various components so in that first of course it has role in two roles are there the vulva has two openings function is release of urine and another function is of course uh, of course here uh, vaginal opening what is the role of vaginal of course copulation is involves vagina and not only the uh, vulva but here what happens here is vaginal opening is present here in the vulva okay so what is the other function discharges birth process release of form all that okay so now mons pubis the, the first part which i'll be explaining about the uh, external uh, genitalia is mons pubis so what is that is mons pubis part of vulva it is mons pubis so mons pubis you can see here which is not uh, here you can see this is the ventral portion this is the dorsal portion anterior and posterior portion so here mons pubis is this prominent part above the and, and the anterior most part or above the majora and minora above the majora and minora will be the prominent part called as mons pubis so where it is located the structures i will tell now and then i will explain uh, the each part now this part will be called mons pubis and mons pubis is just above one of the fold of a skin here this outer fold of a skin this one this is called labia majora there is outer fold of a skin and it is more larger that's why the word there majora and one more is towards one more fold of a skin is towards the inside now how to uh, i can schematically uh, i'm going to just uh, tell here schematically if i explain it schematically this is the mons pubis suppose this is the mons pubis okay mons pubis then there is a major outer fold of a skin this one outer fold of the skin called labia major and there is one inner fold of a skin called a labia minor okay it now this one uh, that is the labia minor uh, the space here that is called as just coming from the female reproductive system including the birth process so there is the during menstruation the fully developed fetus comes to here itself and also the menstrual discharge etc etc so therefore two openings are there of course they fuse behind for cheat and then space between anus and this is called perineum however they are not there only the main part i am going to tell there it's not there in the cell so main part i'm going to tell so here the two openings are going to be here in the vestibular region okay so 
Mons Pubis, uh, this region, Libya Majora, Libya Minor. The Libya Minor, as it forms junction more anteriorly or in the upper part, it forms an erectile structure here. This erectile structure is this one. Here, finger-like structure. Okay. This finger-like structure, which is formed at the junction of, uh, upper junction of the labia minor or this one, this is called as clitoris. Now, I told that there are two openings, one of the opening being vaginal orifice or vaginal opening, it is partially covered by a membrane. So, vaginal opening partially covered by the membrane and this membrane will be called the hymen. This membrane will be called as the hymen. So, first I will start with Mons pubis. Mons pubis. So, Mons pubis anterior, posterior, ventral and dorsal. So, these structures are more posterior and this is going to be more towards the anterior part. So, or simply you can tell it is present above the lab, it is present above the labia majora. So, location, where is Mons pubis is present above the labium, labia is plural, if you say labium, it is referring to one. So, above the labia majora, above the uh, labia majora. Now, what does it consist of? It's, first of all, I told little bit it is protruding or elevated. So, here it will be made up of fatty tissue. So, labia majora has a skin and hair on outside, okay. And underneath that skin and hair will be fatty tissue. So, it has fatty tissue underneath. It has fatty tissue underneath and uh, suppose here inside, here the fatty tissue is going to be there and covering that fatty tissue will be the skin and of course the portion that has, that is having hair. So, Mons pubis is a elevated portion, slightly protruding portion of the vulva and uh, this is going to be covered. It's mainly rich in fat tissue and it's going to be covered with the skin and hair portion. As I schematically told, uh, so this is going to be the uh, labia, uh, not labia, I say this is going to be the Mons pubis here. This is going to be the Mons pubis. So, Mons pubis part is over now. So, it's also called Mons venerus. This is also called Mons venerus. Now, Libia majora coming to Libya major. Libya major. First of all, it is similar to or you can tell homologous to scrotum in the male. So, homology exists between certain reproductive systems in male and female. So, now labia majora can be compared to scrotum in the male. So, labia majora is the outer fold of skin. outer fold of skin. 
the BM major is what? An outer fold of skin. Now this skin is, this fold is much larger. How is this fold? It is larger. Okay, larger fold of the skin. So major, labia major. Now if you see, the one that surrounds the vulva is the uh, labia major, the skin fold, surrounding skin fold is the labia major or boundary vulva. Okay, so it can have some uh, um, some uh, of the pubic hair, it can have some of the pubic hair. So whatever hair is situated here in the mons pubis is also called pubic hair. So uh, partly covered by pubic hair and it can also have sebaceous glands that is oil secreting glands can be present in labia majora okay so that uh, th these are this is about the outer fold of a skin so when i drew a schematic diagram there what was this this was uh, what is called the mons pubis or mons veneris and there is outer fold of a skin labia majora and therefore inner fold they will fuse posteriorly however okay so there is outer fold of the skin okay so next is labia minora Labia minora. Okay. So it is homologous to penile urethra. Uh, what is it? It is the inner fold of a skin. First I told labia means actually refers to lip like. Okay. So labia outer fold of a skin. And labia minora is the inner fold of the skin. So till now what is completed is mons pubis which also consists of pubic hair and labia majora which also have some amount of pubic hair continued in the labia major and the inner one is called has the labia minora it does not have the pubic hair but this is the inner fold of a skin and is much smaller okay it's a minor one or smaller in size where it is present is towards the inner side if outer side is labia majora inner side will be labia minora so inner fold of a skin this inner fold of a skin this inner fold of a skin is smaller remember this has to be noted that's why okay it's smaller okay uh, now what happens uh, how do you identify with the whatever the schematic diagram i have drawn this will be the mons pubis and this will be the pubic hair, outer fold of the skin, okay, outer fold of the skin it is. So this is mons pubis with the pubic hair, outer fold of the skin uh, that is going to be the majora which also has small amount of hair than the inner fold. Uh, called labia minor. Right now, I'm explaining about the labia minor. So, inner fold of the skin. Okay. So, interior, so remaining part, uh, rest part of the external genitalia, I'm going to explain in the next class.